Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one red cell at a time, back with the man, myth, the legend, Mr. Matt, the mortgage guy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Mike. I just thought of a, a funny joke that some some commenters that want to roast me can say, uh, you know, Matt's out looking for work. He's got a shirt and tie on today. He's going to <laughs> job interviews. <laughs> that used to be the thing in tech. Anytime somebody was wearing a tie, they were job interviews. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, things are I, tough in mortgage. Matt, the mortgage guy, has got a shirt and tie. He's it's got gonna, interviews it's gonna go lined to up. Be an Apple Genius Bar. He's <laughs> gonna find Matt, the mortgage guy. That is funny. But let's actually cover it because I want people to go check out your channel. You are interviewing at noon today. Hence the tie, the one and only Barry Habib. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be good. I don't know if it's gonna be recorded, but um, we've got links everywhere across all my socials. You know, Matt, the mortgage guy on YouTube. Uh, Matt the Mortgage Guy UM on Instagram, Matt the Mortgage Guy on TikTok, um, all over the place. We're trying to get all housing professionals, real estate agents, loan officers, everybody um, to tune in because the market yeah. is a changing. Yeah. And, and, uh, let's let's talk about that exactly. Um, first and foremost, uh, was it Al Altos Research? You forwarded me a video on YouTube. Uh, basically, I watched it, so thank you. I love first and foremost. Let me be very, very clear. I love Altos Research stuff. I love anybody who is in the data and just reads the data. Right. I love that. But in that video, which I actually shared with my community, um, he said uh, no one called inventory drop. I took exception with that. <laughs> <laughs> give, give, give Mike Simonson a call. I'll be like, hey, you know what, Mike. Yeah. You forgot about your buddy, Mike Zubes over here. Yeah. 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 And I say that cause I took a lot of heat. I was so early in that call, like three months ago. I'm like, dude, I don't feel good. This winter is going to be cold. The, the supply is going to drop and sure enough it happened. So anyways, yeah. I want to take I mean, a And that's the thing time. too, is like, you didn't say it once or twice. You said it a dozen times yeah. about supply destruction. And so the first thing I thought of when I saw that video was you, awesome. I was like, this is what Mike was talking about supply destruction. And you know, it wasn't easy for people to wrap their heads around you know what would be interesting is to ask a lot of these folks who said, here come the foreclosures, here come the inventory, all the things that pointed towards crash and all the crash guys, like you need inventory for prices yeah. to crash. Like like a, a, a serious interview with somebody to say, like, what happened? What happened yeah. to that theory of yours? Yeah, no. Yeah. If you are in the crash camp, you have to have inventory rise. You can't have falling inventory and a crash. It just, those two don't go hand in hand. But this video is not about a crash. This is actually about something we agree and disagree on. So let's talk about that. You and I both sit here today and we reserve the right to change our opinions tomorrow that the winter is going to be cold. I'm calling the, you know, the polar vo vortex, frozen tundra, whatever you want to call it between now and March. It's going to be, it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow, but it really comes down to, I think we both agree on this. Sellers and buyers are not seeing eye to eye today, right? A transaction is, is complete when buyers and sellers agree. And the most important number is price. Uh, it's pretty interesting because you, you have one opinion and mine is completely opposite. So who do you think has the most stress or motivation to sell today? I think, well, it's not all sellers. Correct. I, correct. I, I think, as a collective, sellers in general are more urgent and acting more urgent, in my opinion, you know, based on conversations I'm having and just my my view of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, buyer sentiment plays a big part in 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 real estate. And right now, I feel like the buyer sentiment, the 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 vibe I'm getting, hundreds of pre-approved buyers is if it might be better a month or two from now, why buy now? Yeah. This is really interesting because, again, the more and more I dig into this data and why it was easy in hindsight to call a transaction crash is 51% of buyers are also a seller. 51, right? I, earlier, like nine months ago, I didn't know that. I just knew the move-up buyer was dead. And I knew that a move-up buyer was two transactions. I had no idea in a, a healthy market like we saw in 18 and 19 51% of transactions were these move up buyers, meaning two transactions. That's now ghosted. That's now out. Because again, those people aren't going to move. It doesn't make financial sense for anybody. Right. So that leaves kind of two extremes to me. That leaves first time home buyers and what I'll call the cash luxury buyers. Because if you take out the middle, that's all you got left. Right. So when I look at this, 
to me, it's the buyers, right? Because I just see sellers. Again, it's not everyone, like you say. I think 80% of people have rates below four. You know, 90% of people are below five. I mean, it's just like, and this is why winter is going to be so slow because the big thing about housing, not like TVs, not like clothes, like Target and Walmart, they get a huge shipment. They slash prices because they got to blow them out. They got more stuff coming on. Homes are where people live. It doesn't have the same thing and it produces income and all of these things. So I actually think what we might see come <coughs> might see coming out of March is buyers. I think buyers break first. And that is because FHA, US, and actually the numbers today for Mortgage Bankers Association, while purchases were down 29% year on year, refis down 83. They actually highlighted for the first time um, VA loans and USDA were both up week on week. Yeah. So again, uh, I think I think it's gonna be the first time buyers that blink first. Yeah, I mean, you you could be right, and and that's that's you know interesting uh, thing to look at. I I also am just curious because I don't know the data, like mm -hmm. what percentage of buyers are relocation buyers. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. because like you said, the move up buyer being dead. Like I run the numbers every day. Yeah. And someone's not selling for five hundred and buying for nine hundred and tripling their payment. Triple, They're just not, not when, no. when they could, when they could do it for a 10% or 15% bump in their rate, because they were going lower rate, taking equity and throwing it towards a bigger house. Maybe. That made sense. Yeah. Tripling your mortgage payment in this environment, nobody's doing it. But no bueno. I wonder how much is, you know, California to Texas, California to Tennessee. Yeah. You know, the problem by... with that, I, lo I, I love the way you're thinking, but unfortunately we just had two years where that, was encouraged. We had demand pulled pulled forward. The last right. two years of the pandemic, everybody who wanted to move to Vegas, Graham Stephan is already in Vegas. He's not going to go there again, right? All of these Texas, all the California has seen negative net migration. I think two, maybe three years in a row now, because everybody left the last two years. So I think that's interesting. I think that's possible, but I think we have a big air pocket because anybody who wanted or was close to doing it did it. It's over, right? right. And you're right too. Like there was like just steroid injection into demand because of low interest rates and because of that. And, um, you know, an, another piece of it, like this is a multi-layered cake yeah. with a thousand different, uh, things to think about is, you know, we just saw, uh, core CPI, one of the biggest things, housing rent, you know, 0.7% exactly. or whatever it was like, yeah. that's an eight and a half percent year on year rent increase. Like that's not getting any cheaper. Um, oh. and so, you know, eventually people are going to choose, they want to pay high rent or a high housing costs. Unfortunately, there's, there's, there's no low cost, you know, option for you. No. It's one of the two, which, which both is, is high cost. And, um, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I just know that buyer sentiment from a lot of buyers seems to be, you know, albeit in my opinion, and a lot of agents I work with, like there's more opportunity than ever. And there's more opportunity for a seller concession to buy down the rate. There's more opportunity for, hey, you like this neighborhood? You couldn't get a house without bidding a hundred thousand above just one year ago. Now you've got 14 houses to choose from. You can find the nicest one, get it at a reasonable price and a credit to buy down the rate. Albeit it's not last year's rate, but yeah. you know. Yeah. What I think we're gonna go through is again, it's about five months where buyers and sellers don't agree because again, we are heading into the holidays. No sellers, no, very few sellers are going to want to list during the holidays. Uh, very few sellers. I mean, there again, I called it earlier, right? July 20th was a big day. We saw a rush of inventory. Now the inventory is coming off wish pricing. Everything we've talked about is happening right now. I just think, I think we're going to, I think we have to just get to March. And then March, we're going to see it thaw. And I do not know which way it goes. Because by March, Matt, we could have 6% unemployment. We could have four. We could have mortgage rates at seven and a half. They could be five and a half. We could have yes. Ukraine war over. It could still be going. We could have China invade Taiwan. It never happens. It's, it's going to be a very confusing winter and i have no idea which way this goes but i do know one thing i do not think buyers and sellers will come to any agreement the next four or five months at least at scale yeah i think you're right i think the uh you know transaction number you know keeps getting revised lower 
as far as you know the, the number so, of i wish somebody would have called that early and told people that was coming but yeah like a four million number some yeah. crazy wild guy yeah some guy talking about four million was over seven yeah that guy i wish, <laughs> wish that guy got more credit uh so yeah it's coming but again this this i always want to end on a positive note this is going to be the best 12 to 18 months as a real estate investor i'm only going to do great deals I wrote 35 offers in the last two or two and a half months, all great deals, all looking for seller concessions, all looking for seller carries, uh, seller financing. All these things are going to be amazing. You got to do the work. You can't stop. It's it's not sit down and wait. It's do the work every day. Keep on trying. And uh, I can't wait to do a, a, a great deal between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, as an investor, I think the 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 number one thing that you look for is a motivated seller. And, and the reason why I you know, am biased and think that there's more motivated sellers than buyers is because I get the notes from agents. Yeah. Hey, your client saw this one. What do they think? Hey, you know, because somebody who's already closed on their next house out of state or yeah. somebody who, you know, is going to split up an estate and they want to sell this house, like they've already agreed. We don't want to keep it. The money so, is so spent. Yeah. So yeah, they want to sell. Right. And, you know, for some buyers, it's like, I'm going to go look, I'm going to offer eight and a quarter get 10,000 in credit. If I don't get it, there's yeah. a, you know, some stuff to choose from. And that's been on the market for 33 days. That's been on the market for 22. I don't feel like I'm in that big of a hurry. Like that mm -hmm. switch flipped real quick, Agreed. which I think is great for buyers. You know, yeah. there, there's, yeah. there's not like frenzy and panic buying. Um, so we, yeah. we gonna see Mike. It's going to be a very cold winter. Um, it, uh, it does get better. I think in March, it's just, we got to get through it. We just got to get through it. Buyers and sellers are not agreeing. A transaction does not occur unless both agree. I just don't see it coming to fruition. Nobody knows where rates going unemployment, negative wealth effects, stock market. It's, it's all noise that we just have to chew through Matt. If somebody wanted to do something, uh, how should they reach out to you? Greatmortgagebroker.com. quick and easy form. Let me know where you're at, how we can help. We're in 46 or 47 states. The states we're not in will refer you to um, somebody who's, um, you know, great and willing to help. Good yeah. news about, you know, the market slowing down too, is you've got, you know, professionals that are eager mm -hmm. to provide a lot of value, give you great service because, you know, business is, is slower than it was last year. So greatmortgagebroker.com. I will give you a shout out. I'm getting a lot of feedback from the one rental at a time community, which is obviously full of investors. They love working with you. They love your feedback, customer service. Your team is awesome. Uh, they're doing deals, right? I'm sending out postcards almost every day. So uh, investors are finding great deals. And if you haven't got your first 10 loans, go to Matt, the mortgage guy. If you have an over 10, he does do non-QM and things of that nature. So Matt, thank you very much. Thanks, Mike.